I used to have to plan my entire life around month-end close, but now it runs itself while I sleep. In today's video, I'm going to show you the six steps to automate any month-end report that you can apply to whatever work you need to get done. The best part is this process uses tools that you've already got on your computer. No budget, no IT team, just you setting yourself up for success. If that sounds good, let's get rolling. Welcome to the channel. I'm Mike. I'm a senior finance leader turned automation expert. Over the last decade, I've helped companies everywhere from brand new startups to the Fortune 100 automate more than 20,000 hours of work out of their processes. And today, I want to teach you how to do the same in your workflow. Again, with no budget and no IT team, just tools you've already got on your computer. Make sure to stick around to the end because the automatic distribution is the coolest part of this entire process. You'll never have to send another email about your report again. And make sure to check out the link in the description to join my weekly newsletter, Finance Automation Insider. I'm going to send you automation hacks, tips, and tricks just like this every single week that will save you time and help you get promoted. Again, make sure to click the link down in the description to get the weekly newsletter. I'll also send you a free guide to 15 five-minute finance automations that you can roll out today. So here I've got an Excel file like the Excel file so many of us have. We've patched together some copy and pasted data. You'll see here I've got my point of sale transaction data pasted in. I've got my GL data, all my income statement data posted in. I've got a summary page and then I've got a pivot. POS means point of sale, could mean piece of, you know, you know what. So we've got all of this baked in here and it's all just copied and pasted and hacked together with some if functions. Again, we all have something like this. Now, it's really important to mention, this isn't going to be exactly the report you have. It's not going to be exactly the reports that I use in my day job. This is about the process. We all have reports that have this kind of a process, copy, paste, run this data, and then we put it over into a PowerPoint that looks something like this. And again, we're all going to have different PowerPoints. Look at this commentary. It's barely adding any value. We're all going to have these PowerPoints. We're all going to have the Excel files. They'll all be a bit different. All of our reports will be different. Even within our jobs, some of our reports will be different. But this is about the process. So instead of looking at the exact details of these reports, this Excel, this PowerPoint, because I can't know every single file you're going to come across, focus on the process. Focus on the thought process of taking this clunky Excel-based and PowerPoint-based report into the automated process I'm going to show you. Remember the process. Now, speaking of the process, here's the roadmap to automate a month-end report. First, you're going to document the current state. Where are we today? What data am I using? What analysis am I outputting? What commentary do I have? Step two, we're going to collect data with Power Query. We're going to use Power Query to go to our data sources and bring all of our disparate data together. No more copying and pasting. It's banned. Stop it right now. Number three, we're going to analyze the data with Power Pivot. This isn't going to be the final product we send to our business partners, but this is going to be our tool to analyze and understand all the data. Number four, automatic commentary. We're going to share a cloud spreadsheet where stakeholders will enter their own commentary. Power Query then is going to pull it all into our report. Number five, we're going to visualize this in Power BI. We're going to use Power BI to run our report automatically so we don't have to lift a finger and we can spend time supporting the business, adding value, and coming up with actionable insights. And step number six, we're going to distribute this automatically using subscriptions in Power BI. So this is the process that you can apply to any month-end report you have. Now I'm going to walk you through step by step to show you how to implement this process on that exact same messy data and PowerPoint you saw to come up with something much better and more useful. Have any questions so far? Go ahead and leave them down in the comment. I read and respond to every single one, and I'm more than happy to help. Now, the first thing we want to do is document the current state. So we've got an Excel file and a PowerPoint. We have a summary page. This is using some ifs to pull from a couple of data sets. We're doing some variances, and then we've got a little bit of store information. So that's the report number one. Report number two, we have a point of sale pivot. So this is right now, it's showing us, uh, at the moment, it's showing us our hours by month, but we're using this to evaluate lots of different things. So we need a way to look at kind of trends within the business. All right, the data. So we've got a copy-pasted data set. It looks like this is our transaction data by day and by hour or minute. And then our GL data looks like we've got actuals and budget 
for all of our various accounts and locations by month. So that's the data. So it looks like we're pulling point of sale data from our point of sale system. We're pulling financial data from the ledger. And then we're doing a couple of analyses on that. Now, what are we presenting? So we've got a PowerPoint deck, not a lot going on in here. We've got a financial highlight. It looks like this is just kind of an income statement with some variances. We're doing a little bit of commentary, not the most value added. What does this mean? Product mix? What does timing mean? And then we've got some point of sale insights. Now, this is just downright terrible. This is a copy and paste right out of a pivot. We can definitely do better than this in the automated format. But these are the insights. So we want to make sure when you do a transformation, you give people at least as much as they have now, preferably more. But you have to make sure we've ticked off all of these boxes. So working really with two data sets, and we need to at least produce an income statement and some point of sale transactions to get trend insights. So up on screen, I've got the Power BI dashboard. This is going to be the hub of all of our activities for month and close, and everything is going to kind of feed into this and flow through this. It's not very pretty yet, but for this video, I'm focused on functionality more so than formatting because we're all going to have different formatting. We're all going to want to customize it to our brand, and that's a later step that we can take. Always make sure to get things functional before you get them looking pretty because you can endlessly tweak the formatting, but the data is really what's key. So there are three tools that are really critical to this process. The first one is a dashboarding solution. We're using Power BI. You could use Tableau, Looker, whatever you have access to. The second is a data transformation tool. In this case, we're going to be using Power Query. Since Power Query is free and available on everyone's computers, I think that's probably the thing to go with, but there are other options that your company may have access to. Number three is a collaboration tool. Typically, this will be something like a Google Sheets or something like an Office 365 through OneDrive. Any of those options are great. If you have access to something else, cool. What's important is that other people can load numbers in into a live file that updates automatically. So the first thing we want to set up in OneDrive is our Flash collaboration file. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a new Excel workbook. And we're going to call this the Flash template. All right, now I've got three different stores. I'm going to build one of them first. So this is going to be called Lower Manhattan. So let's get this set up so we can then copy it. So we want to set up the core template so it looks like our data in Power BI. So let's go to the data. We want to be pulling in GL data because this is for the close. So we've got a date, a category, an attribute, and a value. So let's go ahead and mimic that. So we'll have our date, our category, our attribute, and our value. And then for us, we're also going to want to put in commentary. So as an example, I always like to put it in an example line. We'll put in a value of zero, but just so they can see it. So in this case, the core data set's using daily. So then we can just put it in the end of the period. So we'll do 531. We'll say we're working on May 2023. We'll put in a category for this. We'll call it just marketing. You know, there could be late invoices that haven't been posted yet. The attribute's going to be actual. In this case, this is an example. The value will be zero. And we'll say leave a comment here. And then we'll go ahead and we'll italicize this so that everyone knows it's just an example. To give some comments some more space here. And then importantly, we want to turn this into a table. So we'll call that a table. And we'll name this store lower Manhattan. All right, then anyone can just kind of come in here and add their additional comments. We're going to go ahead and we're going to duplicate this. So here's Astoria, and here's Hell's Kitchen. And this is almost exactly the same. I'm showing you in Excel 365 because we're working with Power BI, but you can do this exact same thing with Google Sheets, work with Looker Studio. It all works in a very similar fashion. Now that you have this, you're going to go to the share button and you're going to share this file out to your business partners. Your business partners are then going to input all of their adjustments right in here. They're going to do this automatically. They're going to leave you comments. They're going to just type in any late entries here. Accounting can come in and do it. The business can come in and do it. And then you've got all the entries loaded into these tables. But then where it gets really powerful, right? So we built this in the same format. So I'm going to come to my Power Query. We're going to go to Get Data, and we're going to pull in this file that we just built. So we're going to go to Get Data. We're going to pull in this file via Power Query. 
We've got our Flash template right here. We're gonna go ahead and open that to pull it into Power BI with Power Query. It's establishing a connection. And we wanna pull in all three of our tables. Now I forgot to name those two so we can go back and do that. Always make sure to stay organized. And we're gonna load these in. So now these are gonna be three new tables inside of our Power BI. All right, so you see now these three new tables have been added. So we're gonna to wanna to append these as a new query that we can run our Flash off of. We're gonna to go to append queries, append queries as new, three or more tables. We've got GL data right there, and then we'll go ahead and pull these in. So now this is gonna create a new table. We're gonna call this data flash. And now we've got one table that will pull in the actual values that we're getting from the system. So now we've got one table that will pull in the actual values we're getting from the system, along with all the inputs from our business, and it creates it as a new data set. So when you come in, when you hit the refresh button, Power Query is going to go get the file you've set up that has the data you're downloading, the data that's you know partially complete because it's closed, and then you're going to automatically pull in the late adjustments, and then you can reference that directly in your dashboard. What I'll often do is I'll create a tab that's just for the flash. I'll hide the final the final views in the final presentation, and we can pull in the flash, you know, higher level of detail because it's not quite done, doesn't necessarily have as much commentary. And the other cool thing we've done is we've added in this commentary file. So you see I've got a matrix here, and you can actually use a matrix to just pull in straight comments if they're sitting in an Excel file like we just did. So we're gonna go to our data for the flash. We're gonna take our commentary. And you'll see, leave a comment here. Now we gotta do some formatting on this. We wanna filter out the blanks. So now we clearly need to do some formatting on this. You don't want it to look like it. The first thing I would do is I would go to style. I would just say none. Then you can go in, you can get rid of the grid. You can get rid of any of the kind of subtotals. You can clean up the values as much as you want to. So you can make this look like it is just commentary pulling in. But then what you're gonna do is you're gonna have your flash over here updated with all of the new you know, temporary adjustments. You can even pull in a view that shows the adjustments if people wanna understand what you're adjusting for. And then you can pull in all the commentary automatically. So with one push of the button, so with one push of the button, this button right here, Power Query is gonna go grab the data file you've got, whether it's straight from the system or a file you've downloaded. It's gonna to go to OneDrive and pull in the comments that your business partners are loading directly. And then it's gonna pull it right into Power BI where you can do a subscription. So once this is all done, you would go ahead, you're gonna hit the publish button. We're gonna save our changes, it's gonna upload it. So now you'll see we're in the online Power BI service. We've uploaded our leave a comment here, test has been placed. So you come here to subscriptions, you set up a subscription, we'll call this one day two flash. We'll repeat this monthly. Well, this every month on day two. And then we wanna give ourselves a little bit of a buffer time to make sure we can pull everything in. So we'll say we're gonna send this out at 10 a.m. Now you can always come in here and you can send it now. You can always come in here and you can delay it or turn this off if you need to, but that way it's gonna go out and it's gonna let everybody know that the flash is ready at 10 a.m. You'll have an opportunity to come and check it, make sure it's all good, or you can just kind of turn this off until you are ready and then come in and hit send now automatically. It's gonna go right out. So now what do we do for the actual presentation? We do the exact same thing again with just a slightly different template. So I'm gonna create a file for my final commentary. We're gonna call this file Workday 5 Commentary. Again, we're gonna do our three stores. So this will be Lower Manhattan. All right, so now we're gonna put in the month it applies to. We're gonna put in the store location. We're gonna put in comparison. Now for store location, we'll just pop this in for them. So the comparison here could be versus budget or versus prior year, and then this will be the comment. And you're gonna let them fill this out and they can just put in any comments they want. 
It can be about different line items. It can be, you know, you can put in different line items if you want to. Like I could add an account here. So they can talk about specific accounts, however you want to pull it in. And this is going to pull into that matrix view. You're going to consolidate it in exactly the same way we did for the flash. Just in this case, you're just pulling in the commentary because you've got the final numbers to work. And you don't need to do the appending where you pull data in because you've got the final numbers in your Power BI. Then you're going to have your kind of main page. You can pull comments in right here. You can do the commentary through cards. You can do the commentary through matrices. There's so many different options. You can pull in one piece of commentary at a time. If you want to have a page for each store, you can pull in just that store's commentary because you can filter. If you're using the same dimensions, if you're using the same dimensions, you can filter against these things. So you could filter out Lower Manhattan. You could have a Lower Manhattan store page that drills down, or you can have a page that's for all the stores and you can just filter between them. Your commentary is gonna filter just like it's a regular data set. And that's really all the automated month end close is. It's these three tools, a collaboration tool, a data management tool, and a dashboarding tool put together to put the commentary in the hands of your business partners, to eliminate emails flying back and forth, and to get you out of production and actually into the numbers where you can drive actionable insights. I don't know about you, but when I put all this together, it was so easy that I was furious at myself for how long I spent digging in. It's just these three tools used in creative ways, used over and over again, and it's gonna save you so much time. If you've enjoyed this video and wanna dive deeper into Power Query, Power Pivot, and Power BI, I've got a great video that's gonna teach you all three in just 45 minutes. I'm gonna put the link to that here. Again, you'll learn the basics of all three tools in just 45 minutes, so you can start putting this to practice. I'll catch you over there. This is Mike signing off from F9 Finance. Cheers.